The other one is the Sai International, which has been translated a few years back by three American reward sisters. And the English is more simple and it is more modern. The other translation is the Noble Quran by Dr. Mohsen Khan and Takyodin Hilali. But this, I would not recommend it to be given to non Muslims. Muslims, fine, because there are too many brackets. In the footnotes, you have many hadith, you know, Bukhari Muslim, which is good for the Muslims. But there are so many brackets that you fail to realize who is saying that Allah or the person who translated it. So you give footnotes, no problem, but if you give too many brackets, you fail to realize is this message from the translator or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the reason it is good for references, Bukhari, Muslim, Sai Hadith. But for non Muslim, I personally don't advise you to give that. The other third translation, the fourth translation, which is good, is by Maulana Abdul Majid Daryabadi. It's good for comparative religion. He gives references from the Bible, he gives references from the Hindu scriptures. It's ever been four volumes. The other one is Muhammad Piktal. Muhammad Muhammad Piktal, you are the Britisher. Even that translation is good, but it doesn't have any commentary. The other one good is by Muhammad Asad. Muhammad Asad, this translation is good. He quotes very often Zamakshiri. And he gives root words of Arabic. But you have to be careful. Because Zamakshiri is a logical tafsir. But sometimes it deviates from the Sai Hadith. So you have to be careful. I normally prefer translations which are directly done from Arabic into that language. So English translation translated directly from Arabic to English are the best. There are other translations which are translated from Arabic to Urdu and then English, like Maulana Maududi, Dawatul Quran by Shams Pirzada. They are good, but the chances of error is more. Because someone translates from Arabic to Urdu, then from Urdu to English. And that's what happened with Maulana Maududi translation. And the second edition, the second translation done by Zafar Ishaq Ansari is far better. So this was just a few translations which I named. There are other by T.B. Irving. T.B. Irving, the translation more of American English. And there are several other translations. Before I end my talk, I'd like to give the message which Allah says in the Quran. In Surah Hashar, chapter number 59, verse number 21, Allah says that had this Quran be revealed on the mountain, it would have surely fallen down and would have become in utter ruin. That means if the Quran would have been revealed on a mountain and if the mountain had feelings, the mountain would have tumbled down and would have come down to pieces. But to us Muslims, it makes no difference. Why? Because we don't understand it. Allah says that if the mountain, a mountain is a sign of power, or something which is hard like a rock. If the Quran would have been revealed on a mountain, the mountain would have, would have fallen down to utter ruin. But it makes no difference to us. Allah says that we Muslims, we have to read the Quran with understanding. And we Muslims, if you see back into the history, we Muslims, we were on top of the world. Today, we Muslims are on the receiving end. Why? The reason previously we were on top of the world was because we were close to Quran and Sai Hadith. And today, we are on the receiving end is because we have gone far away from our religious scriptures, far away from Quran and Sunnah. If we get back close to the Quran and Sunnah, inshallah, we Muslims would again become the torchbearers of the world. I would like to end my speech with the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which mentioned Sahih Bukhari hadith number 5027 of Bukhari in the old edition volume number 6 hadith number 545 where Hazrat Usman may Allah be pleased with him said that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Khairakum min ta'lamul Qur'ana that best amongst you are those who learn the Quran 
and teach it to the others. Wa akhru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakamullah khair, Dr. Zakir Naik, for your vital and emphatic speech on reading Al-Quran with understanding. Jazakamullah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, revive all of you with His blessings for your earnest and attentive listening to the talk. I am certain in measure more, the same would continue in the, inshallah, more interesting question and answer session. Your session, your opportunity to cross-question Dr. Zakir Naik, your opportunity to ask for clarifications on what has been spoken and any other question you may have on the topic, to derive more measure, more mileage in the available time that we have, you need to follow the following rules. Kindly note, one, your question should be on the topic Al-Quran, should it, be read, should it be read with understanding only? Only on the topic. If you have general questions, tomorrow inshallah we have the open, ask Dr. Zakir, an open, exclusively open question answer session. Reserve those questions for tomorrow, not for today. Second point, your question should be brief and to the point, preferably framed in one to five sentences. This is question time for you, not a lecture or a thesis discussion time. Please note. Third point, your question should be only one at a time. For your second question, you need to go back at the queue and line up again and await your chance. We have three mics arranged in this open ground, two for gents, one close to me in front of the gent section for the gents. The second question mic for the gents is in the rear section of the gents. We have the third mic in the ladies section in front of the ladies seating for the ladies to put forward their questions on. Non-Muslims would be given first preference to put forward their questions. Volunteers at the mics are requested to kindly ensure that the same is implemented firmly and kindly. Kindly state your name and profession before putting forward your question to Dr. Zakir. May we have the first question on the mic next to me? Here. If there's any brother who's a non-Muslim, they would be given first preference. Any non-Muslim brother here? No? Okay, we'll allow on the second mic. Any non-Muslim brother there? No? Any sister in the lady section who's a non-Muslim? We would like no. non-Muslims to be given the, question, the chance, the opportunity to cross-examine Dr. Zakir Naik on this topic. Quran, Al-Quran, whether you read it with tazakkur quran or with tadabbur quran is for the whole of humanity. Therefore, we are choosing to allow non-Muslims to put forward their question. Yes, brother, on the mic number one. 